Have you ever thought of giving a new look to something, maybe by using paint, but you don't quite dare to do it? Maybe you're afraid it won't last long or it won't look right? Well, hopefully today's video will help you out one way or the other. Um, you guys know I've done a lot of painting projects over the years and I do get a lot of questions about them. You know, how are things holding out? Is it worth it? Do I have any regrets? So I thought in this video, I'll give you guys an update on how things are actually looking. Uh, do I have any regrets? You know, would I do it again? So the first thing we're going to take a look at is the bathroom floor. Hi everyone, Mary here. Welcome to my channel. So I'm so excited today. I'm finally going to start on this bathroom project I've been talking about. And I hope you don't think I'm too crazy here to actually paint um, our bathroom floor. The floor in here is a vinyl tile and it had discolored over the years so it was almost in need of being replaced. And I thought, you know, why spend thousands on replacing it when maybe I can actually kind of fix it for now at least with paint. So basically I just went to Walmart and bought two quarts of paint. One was a dark gray and the other a white and proceeded to paint the floor. I ended up using my Silhouette Cameo to cut out my stencils and if you want to see the full tutorial of this I'll have all of the videos linked down below in the description box, um, any of the projects I talk about in this video, uh, but trust me there was a lot more to it than just putting some paint on the floor with this project. I remember feeling overwhelmed and almost wondering, you know, is this worth it? So here we are four and a half years later and yes, it definitely was worth it. I do not regret doing this. In fact, this is probably one of my favorite projects that I ever did in our house. I probably should have saved this one for last, but um, it just made the biggest difference and it didn't cost a lot. And I just love the look of it. Like I don't grow tired of it. Uh, here and there, there are a few little chips of paint missing. I mean, if you look closely, uh, but just overall holding out great. I never even reapplied a top coat or anything. Um, I had put a Minwax polyacrylic uh, over the paint, which you can see that in the full tutorial, uh, but I think that really helped to preserve it. Since we're in here anyway, we'll see how the cabinets are holding out. I had also painted those about four and a half years ago, had used a little roller to apply my paint. So in this video, I will be working on repainting the cupboards in the bathroom. As you can see beside me here, I took all the doors off and I just picked up this Do It Best brand paint at our local hardware uh, this afternoon. They tinted it to a color that I actually found in Vows Bar brand paint. And I saw this little brochure in Lowe's one time and I just fell in love with the color of this wheelbarrow. I don't think they look too bad, you know, after four and a half years later. I mean, there's a few places here and there where maybe fingernails scrape some paint off, uh, but I can always touch that up. I just haven't gotten around to it, uh, but it definitely was worth it to give them a fresh coat of paint. And yes, the wooden beam is still hanging tight there above the shower. I remember how scary it was for me to put it up by myself. Uh, there wasn't anyone home at the time and I was determined to get it fastened to the wall without any help. So a few years ago, I painted some kitchen cabinets. It was for my niece, Catherine, and her husband, Austin. Hi everyone. So today I'll be working underneath this overhang. The project I'm working on is my niece is getting married in August. We're all so excited for them. And her fiance currently lives in a little house back in the woods and everything kind of needs a fresh coat of paint in there. Currently, as I'm filming here, uh, most of it is done, but I still have the doors and the drawers to spray paint. And the thing that comes to mind when I think about painting those cabinets is the storm that raged through here while I was painting them. So by the time I had these doors all prepped and ready to be painted, there's some dark 
stormy clouds come up here in the west. So basically I just went over all of the cabinets with crud cutter, you know, cleaning them up and doling the surface up a bit. And then I used my sprayer for the doors and the drawer fronts, you know, applied the paint. And then of course for the frame part, I used a brush. And then in the end, I gave everything a coat of Annie Sloan Clear Wax. I really like this product. It just gives a nice, smooth, hard finish, you know, sealing off that paint. And here is what they look like two years later gotta say I'm really impressed with how these are looking I mean two years later and they barely have any paint coming off I mean here and there you see a small scratch but nothing that couldn't easily be touched up and it's not even you know that noticeable kitchen cabinets is definitely something I would always paint like I feel we spend so much time in the kitchen or I do and I just want it to be a bright cheerful fresh space and not some dark almost orange looking space uh, for me, it's just worth it, even if, you know, some paint comes off here and there, it's still worth it to have them painted. The subway tile wallpaper is holding out nicely, too, the way it looks. Since we're doing updates anyway, I thought I'd give you guys an update on how our pond is doing. A lot of you have been asking. And the weather is just perfect out here today. Um, I just love being out here. I don't even need a sweatshirt. How awesome is that for October? You may remember a couple of years ago, I had done a sponsorship with a company called The Pond Guy. Um, they sent out an aeration system along with some product for our pond. The aeration system, of course, was to circulate the water in our pond, you know, keep it healthy. And then the product was to get rid of some of the muck in here and they were a great company to work with and the product actually ended up working like we did get rid of some of the muck but it almost seemed to me I mean this was just my way of thinking but it almost seemed like the more muck that it got rid of it kind of brought up old smelly stuff from the bottom of the pond and released it into the air because it got so bad smelling this summer like sometimes when I was working outside in my gardens I would smell it it almost had like a gassy like a landfill type of smell um, it was awful and then it also had a complete green film like all over the pond and it wasn't algae or I not an algae that I'd be familiar with um, I'm still not sure what exactly it was but um, it sure did not look nice or smell good at all. In fact, I don't think we spend any time down here this summer simply because of that. So to give you a brief and simple pond update, I could easily say, no, the pond is not doing very well. It's really unhealthy. And we are working with a local guy who specializes in pond treatment to see what our next steps would be. Um, he did warn us that there is a chance that the pond would need to be dredged, which that means actually scooping out the old muck, kind of redigging the whole pond, and it would be a really costly thing to do. So I'm not sure that we'd actually do it at this point, but it might be something for the future. Right now we don't have the aeration system going. It's due to be maintenance. We wanna take care of that and then run them again. I always think of the poor fish in here that could use the extra oxygen. You can see how cloudy and murky this water is. I remember you know, years ago, especially in the fall time, it would be crystal clear. Uh, it would look so pretty with the leaves reflected in it. So I hope we can restore the health to this pond eventually. So I have about three or four different things here in my own kitchen that I want to give you guys an update on. Uh, first off is this countertop. So this countertop used to have a dark kind of coffee colored stain on it and I really grew tired of it. I never really cared for the color honestly and it started to come off and it just made it look even worse. And so I decided to strip it. I really spent a lot of time and make sure to check out that video if you want to see the process that I went through to get it to this color. But I have really loved this color. Like I like it for even pictures. Like I take a lot of my uh, pictures for the, you know, the Etsy shop listings using this countertop. I mean it does have a lot of nicks and scrapes and dense and I have to watch so I don't set anything really hot on it. It does leave a mark but I kind of like the character that it has. I definitely don't regret doing this. So let's take a look at the rest of the kitchen countertops. The ones that are on the island, the drop counter, and then our area over by the refrigerator. Uh, so years ago I decided I'm going to turn these into a sort of marble or quartz look and I mean it kind of worked halfway like it's not 
quite terrible looking, but you know, of course, upon closer inspection, you can definitely see it's not the real thing. Unfortunately, I don't have a video of me doing this. Uh, this was before my YouTube channel days, uh, but I remember feeling overwhelmed and stressed out as I was doing them, almost wishing I never would have started, uh, but it was really time consuming because I did like layers of different colors of paint, you know, trying to get that dimension. I think the one by the refrigerator kind of turned out the best. I had more practice by the time I got to that one. I think that was the last one I did. And then of course the one on the island gets the most wear and tear and some of the paint is coming off. And it is something I could probably touch up, but I just don't get around to it. Before I turned these tops into the fake, you know, quartz or marble, they were just a regular wooden top on the island and the drop counter that is. Um, I actually just made them out in the shop. And the one by the refrigerator was for mica. Do I regret doing it? No, I think it really brightened up our kitchen. I've really enjoyed that look over the years. Do I wanna replace them with the real thing? Yes, definitely, someday. I could probably make a long story out of these cabinets, but I'll try to keep it short and just throw some pictures on here because again, this was something I did before I had my YouTube channel. You know, don't have any videos of it. In fact, we were Amish at the time, so I was limited even in the pictures. I think I had a disposable camera that I used just to get some before shots, but they were that orangish oak and I, for some reason at that time, thought I had to use an oil-based paint to paint these cabinets with. Um, that's what I ended up doing, which wasn't entirely, you know, a bad idea, I guess, but um, I painted them an off-white, like a tan color. I soon regretted not painting them white and decided to do so a couple years later. And of course, that paint didn't stay put as well as it would have if I would have just put it directly onto the stain surface uh, with that oil-based paint just being really smooth and filling up all of the grains. I definitely don't regret painting them them, but we definitely want to have a whole kitchen makeover, you know, in the future. Um, that's some of the reason why I don't even bother touching it up because I think, well, eventually they'll probably be replaced anyway. So I wanted to talk a bit about our kitchen table. This is something I painted a couple of years ago and I do have video footage of this. Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. So today I'm planning on painting an oak table. Initially this table was that complete orangish oak color. And I had the legs and the skirting black at one point and had stripped the top and restained it. So it had that primitive country look for a while. Kind of grew tired of that. I felt like this area needed to be brightened up or lightened up. So I just painted the whole table white. And honestly, I like it. It's probably not everybody's taste, but I even like to see the chips that are on here. And I purposely distress the edges. I often say this, but this is a good idea. This is an example of you know, being, having the distressed edges kind of fits to, you know, having the chippy look, I guess, because you're bound to get that with a table like this that gets a lot of use. Uh, so it was definitely worth it to distress those edges. That way it looks like it's supposed to be, you know, with uh, the chips on the top. So I have two things I wanna show you down here in the basement. One of them is our cement floor that I had painted, and the other is the countertops. Let's start out with the countertops. Years ago, this Formica countertop used to be a wood grain design. It was brown in color, and I ended up painting it. I just used an oil base, you know, black paint. And eventually, I think it would be really nice to just replace the whole thing. But for now, I have a cheap fix that I'm gonna try. I bought this contact paper from Amazon. I think from all of my projects, this one surprises me the most. I literally took a cheap contact paper and aligned this countertop with it. And this countertop gets used a lot and heavily with my soap making, like there's lye on here and oils, and it kind of holds out actually. I can't believe it. I honestly don't know if I'd want it on my main countertop like up in the upstairs kitchen, but for down here, it just works great. It looks so much better than it did before. I definitely don't regret doing this. Painting the cement floor is something I almost wish I wouldn't have done. Um, you see the dirt so easily, like every little track is visible. I don't know if it would have some sort of a dimension or texture, it definitely would help. And it also very easily comes off. You know, it's just the way a floor is and then the texture of cement, it's probably not intended to be painted with just a regular floor paint that is. The last thing I wanna show you is the garden. I had shared this spring how we created this new garden down here in our field. It was so much fun this summer, although it was a lot of work. We battled a lot of weeds, which we were kinda of expecting that, you know, with a new garden. And John just recently planted some radishes in here for over winter. Um, we heard from friends that they do this and it's really good for your soil. Plus it keeps the weeds at bay. 
I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I know it was a bit different from my usual, but hopefully it was a help to you maybe in deciding whether you want to paint something or not. Because I know sometimes we just need that little nudge uh, in that direction, you know, to get it done. And I'm maybe the wrong person to go to to ask for advice on, you know, what to paint. Because as you can see, I pretty much paint anything. For me, I'd rather, you know, touch things up every now and then and have something looking the way that I want it to look, like color-wise, than just living with something that is just not pretty to me. I wanted to remind you guys about the event that is coming up. I had talked about it briefly in last week's video. Uh, we have a place here local. It's called the Heritage Center. And on November 18th, there is a holiday experience is the name of it, event being held there where local vendors will be there with their goods just in time for the holiday season. And I just got the list of all the vendors that are gonna be there and it'll be a good show. I'm pretty sure about it. And I'm planning on being there with my little booth structure. I'll probably have candles, soap, uh, wooden decorations, fabric stuff. Uh, just stuff you see on the Etsy shop. I'd love to see you there, so make sure to mark your calendars. I'm pretty sure you won't be disappointed. And they do have a brand new Instagram page if you wanna follow along on you know, the updates and some of the details. I'll link it down below in the description box. And in case you're wondering when we are gonna release our Christmas items for the Etsy shop, uh, that will be soon. In fact, I'm planning on maybe just making a separate little video uh, towards the end of the week, kind of showing you what some of the new products are that we have. Really excited about that. Can't believe in we're in that season again. Uh, time just goes so fast. And I know it's kind of early to be thinking Christmas, but um, it's still nice for people that wanna shop early to have it available. As always, I hope your day is going great. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.